Tailwind CSS is a utility first and mobile optimized framework that is super popular right now. Some love it, some hate it, but today I'm gonna go over 10 tips and tricks to help you style like a pro using Tailwind CSS. The first tip I wanna give is I recommend installing this extension called Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It has right now 3.4 million installs and this helps you when using Tailwind CSS because it helps with autocomplete, syntax highlighting, and linting. So the features that we have here is if you are typing in Tailwind CSS classes, it helps you autocomplete with intelligent suggestions from this extension, as you can see here. Another thing, it allows linting, so it's gonna highlight errors and potential bugs and then tell you what those errors are. And then the third, which is my favorite, is the hover preview. So if you hover over a class in Tailwind CSS, it tells you the CSS style for that specific class. So let's go to a page real quick and when you want to type Tailwind CSS code, you just have to say class name, and then you could start doing these styles right within your JSX or HTML file. So for this, we could have text red 500. And as you can see, if you highlight over it, it shows you a hover preview of what you just typed. You can also do like a text of 3XL. And then as you can see, it's giving you the font size of 30 pixels or 1.875 rems, and then the line height as well. So that is the hover preview. And then also they have the autocomplete preview and the linting preview. So this is the first recommendation. If you even start coding Tailwind CSS, like I said, highly recommend before you even start using Tailwind. The second topic I wanna to go over is the responsive design. So using responsive utility variants inside of Tailwind CSS is very simple to do. So if you have a regular CSS file, you usually do an at media and then do the query and then specify the minimum width or maximum height. For this, there is three ways you can actually do responsive designs and we'll go over all three. So the first one is the default variables and values. So right here off the bat, you see in the docs, we have a breakpoint prefix and they give us the default values of small, medium, large, extra large, and 2XL. And then they match up with the minimum width of 640, 768, 1024, 1280, and 1536 pixels. They're all pixels. And by default, Tailwind CSS is a mobile first framework. So all you have to do here is if we want the text be 3XL on all screens, you do not have to put any media query in front of text 3XL. So the text is going to be a font size of 30 pixels on all media query screens. Now, if we put SM and then we put text 5XL and you hover over it, you're gonna see that on screens that have a minimum width of 640 pixels and more, the text is going to be a 5XL, which is a font size of 48 pixels or three rem. We could change this from small and we could just put large. And if you hover over large, now on screens that have a minimum width of 1024 pixels and more, it's gonna show a text of 5XL. Instead of using the default breakpoint prefix, we can actually customize those prefixes and use whatever you want. As you can see here in the example, we could customize the theme inside of the tailwind.config.js file. And the example shows they use tablet, laptop, and desktop for these specific pixel sizes. So what we could do here is we can copy the screens object, go inside of our Tailwind config file, and inside of theme, we could paste it right here. And as you can see, instead of using SM for small media query, we use tablet. Instead of midsize MD, we use laptop. So this is customizing it if you want to keep things more organized and easier for your developer experience. So for example, now I am going to real quick just shut my server off and then just run it again to make sure all the changes were inside of the Tailwind config file. We are going to go to the home page, and now instead of using SM, we could use tablet, and then we could say text uh, 3XL. And then if we hover over it, it's going to show us that they have a media query with a minimum width of 640 pixels and more. It's going to show a text of 3XL or 30 pixels. You could use the 
laptop or desktop as well. So this is an easy way to actually customize your breakpoint prefixes. The third and final way to use media queries to your advantage inside of Tailwind is by using arbitrary values. This means if you need to use one-off breakpoints that don't make sense to include in your theme or to use a min or max modifier, and this allows you to generate custom breakpoints. So for example, all you have to do is use bracket notation. So as you can see here, they have a min of 320 pixels. So they're saying if the minimum height is 320 pixels or more, you can define the style you want for that specific breakpoint. Same here, if it's a max of 600 pixels, we want the background to be a sky color of 300. And that means it will implement this specific style on any media query 600 pixels and less. So this is how you could use arbitrary one-off values. This third one is gonna be a trick that allows you to make your text have a gradient effect on side of any P tag, H1, any type of text on your application. So all you have to do is type in the BG gradient, and then we have to specify the direction. So we're gonna say to right. And then what we could do from here is we could say the color. So it's gonna be from green 400, and then it is going to be to then we have to give it another green because this is a gradient, green 700. And as you can see here, we have a gradient look that is just a background, but we want this to actually clip to the text. So the next class we are gonna say is we're gonna have the background clip to text. And then this is gonna hide it and then it's putting it inside of the text, but it's still showing black for the text. So what we have to do here is we have to make the text transparent. So text transparent. And then as you can see here, it gives a cool gradient effect. Let me make the font bold so you can see it better. So fonts bold. And then as you can see here, we have a green gradient effect. Then all you have to do is change the colors. You could change this to blue, 700. And then we get a green, a bluish gradient effect on the text. Some people don't like Tailwind because all of the styling is done inside of the JSX or HTML file and they feel like it's just too messy and hard to read. So if that is you and you actually do want to use a CSS file, you actually can. And the way you do that is you go inside of the CSS file and you type in the syntax just like you would with the CSX file like this. And then before you use the Tailwind syntax, you have to have at apply. So now this allows you to actually type Tailwind CSS syntax inside of a CSS file. So as you can see, we have text of 2XL, font bold, and then text gray of 900. To access that inside of a actual JSX file or HTML, you must import that CSS file obviously at the top, but since this is a global CSS wrapping all of the children, I don't have to. And then inside the class name, instead of doing the Tailwind syntax, we just need that class name, which is heading, which I named here. And then these styles should apply to my H1 that says home page. And if we pull up local 3000, as you can see, we have the styles applied to the page. So that allows us to actually style our classes inside of a CSS file. The fifth tip and trick I wanna share is using the Tailwind Merge Package. So this has gained a lot of popularity. As you can see, there's 334,000 downloads and it just keeps increasing. So what this package does, it allows you to use CSS files and syntax and Tailwind syntax all into one element. So the first thing you have to do is you have to install the package right here. We'll go to our text editor, paste that in, now we have the package installed and we could use it. So what we are going to do is go on the file that we want to style. So we're going to use the page.js and we're going to import TW merge from tailwind-merge at the top like that. And how we use the syntax in the class name is a bit different. We're going to have curly braces and then we're going to have a TW merge with the parentheses. And then the first one we want to do is we want to create a module CSS file. So we're gonna have styles.txt like that. We could create a class later. And then we could actually use a string and then use the syntax for Tailwind CSS. So we could just say text of 5XL, font bold, text center. And it'll still apply to this H1. And now we could actually use regular CSS syntax 
also on this h1 as well. So we are going to have a new file called home.module.css. And then we have a text class name like that. And then inside of this, we could just say color of green. So as you see, we're using the regular CSS syntax convention. Now we could close this parenthesis here. We could import the home.modules from styles from home.module.css like that. And now we should have on this H1 a text of green and then also a text of 5XL, a font of bold of Texas Center. Let's run the development server, open up our localhost 3000 and make sure everything looks good. So we're letting this load and as you can see the text is centered, the font's bold and the font color is green. So that is how you use Tailwind Merge to merge two different styles of CSS into one element. All right, so there you have it. Those are five tips and tricks using Tailwind CSS. So if you do have any other recommendations that you wanna see that include Tailwind CSS features or anything related to front end or back end development, leave them down in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Other than that, hit that like button and also subscribe for more and hit the notification bell to stay notified with any new videos that come out on my channel. But other than that, happy coding and have a great day.